Hello. Howdy. Hello. And Myrtle's what? back. Yeah, Myrtle's back. And people and I are have... making me hungry in the chat. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh yeah, chicken soup and all that stuff. Yeah. Chicken chili and then that bone great. broth chicken soup. Oh, what's wrong with Brogan? Body aches. Oh. Mm. Hope he gets better soon. Poor, poor, poor Brogan. Poor puppy. Mm. Poor That's puppy. Well, Brogan's That's... a puppy. He's a no. kid. <laughs> He's a <laughs> human. He's a human he's a, person, he's, but I guess you, know, you can call him a pup. <laughs> is. He's Brooklyn's, you know, one, one of her, her puppies, kind of. Matt! Because he typed my name in all chat, so I'm saying Matt! Shouting. <laughs> uh, well, everyone, we have Myrtle back. Mm -hmm. And I have something to flaunt. Just before we start the stream, I don't know if the uh, camera's going to... Uh, this is normal. That's normal. But guess what? <laughs> There's a trophy. Nice. It's oh, really it's, um, hard to see. It out. Green screen. But yeah, it says, uh, what the fish winner 2022. Oh. It's one of a kind. No one else can Yay. have that. Oh. I don't even have it. I just have a regular one. It's because Myrtle is the winner. I mean, I was a close second. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Thor is sick too. Oh, did you have any points, Kelly? Or did you consistently go to I'm bed? I, I don't think I, I've, I've gone to bed before everyone let the fish. You I know, think you were awake for one, baby. Maybe I made one. <laughs> Well, it's nice to see StreamYard is still very much broken, uh, oh. not showing any viewer count at all. Oh. oh, I don't even know how to find out viewer count on StreamYard. I have no clue where that is. Um, if it's your stream, you can just yeah. see it in the upper left-hand corner. I've but, never uh, noticed that. It's there. But, it, huh. but right now, it's just showing zero, so I have to go to the YouTube side to see. So mm. I, we don't feel like we're talking to nobody. Scotty thinks you look different, Myrtle. Uh, yeah, I'm not in my dorm right now. I'm in a quiet room because my uh, roommates got a class. So uh, I'm using uh, the camera that's on my laptop and it's different. Got it. Got it. Yeah, I didn't even notice. Nice suit, though. Thank you. Well, yeah, I look good. I mean, I'm wearing pajama bottoms, but Myrtle looks good. <laughs> 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 I just rendered my new background in time because I haven't uh, shown the the 90 in a while. Well, where did it go? There it is. Like I had it. Oh, I love the 90. Oh, I've seen this tank in person and it's really great. And I have we can't that. see Steven's face, but that tank looks there great. There you go. <laughs> Matt says, I bet he looks better in his birthday suit. <laughs> Maybe. Well, then. <laughs> okay. Hopefully I successfully cropped out the part where I walk up to the camera in my underwear to turn it off. Get this set up. I, I, think I, I mean, there might be a surprise. Stay We're tuned. Find out in about 12 minutes. <laughs> There we go. Show off Potential the surprise. Uh, stay tuned, everyone. Or or don't. <laughs> I guess no one is a prisoner here. You can do what you want. Yeah, yeah. You you can go. You can go. Yeah. So you judged the science fair. You and uh. I did and Jake and Jake. I both did? Yeah. So this weekend. So we drove down Friday night because it's in Indianapolis. That's two and a half hours away. And uh, it started at like eight in the morning on Saturday. So we we didn't want to drive Saturday morning. Um, but yeah, it was all day long and it was amazing. I did the ninth grade kids. Jake did the 11th grade kids because we were just randomly assigned to a group. They try to get 
a good mix of experts among the panel of judges. So like they have a certain number of engineers, a certain amount of number of biologists, a certain number of people who can judge physics competently um, in each of the groups. And uh, they were amazing. The, those kids were so good. Um, I mean, even my kids were ninth graders and I was just amazed at the quality of work that they're doing. So a girl who won first place, she works with the, um, so she's in um, Carmel, which is Northern, it's a suburb of uh, Indianapolis on the North side. And she works with her local sewer department and she has developed an assay for microplastic detection. So she has a mentor within that within that lab, but it uses like a $1,200 fluorimeter and a common dye. And like, she's validated it. She's already published it in a peer reviewed journal. She has a patent pending. She's gone to speak at like, um, water and sewer conferences. Like she was just amazing. And she was so smart. Like she was able to explain to me what a standard curve is. She had done statistics and she understood it. She's a ninth grader. Um, our second place gal, she did all of this computer modeling using AI and machine learning for weather prediction, and nobody understood it. It was so beyond. <laughs> just did this at her house. It was so amazing. She was so smart. We were so proud of them. So two girls, first and second place. Yeah, two girls. Nice. A third place um, was a boy. And he did this uh, experiment where he grafted by himself 20 trees and tested whether um, a mycorrhizal fungus assisted graft formation. And he followed the, he did like six months of follow up, which is amazing. And he had like looked up all these papers. And I mean, he just did this in his garage. Is it there was, like a, a. It was amazing. Pre qualifier for the science yeah. fair, so like they, they have to submit to, their thesis had, or whatever. Well, they had to win a regional, okay, a regional competition first. Um, and then, so the top three, so those three kids will all go on to a national competition. They all won a prize, a pretty big cash prize, and they all get sent to a national competition. I mean, the ones in Jake's group i mean they were so amazing too I and mean, we were just blown away really only one of the ones i judged wasn't, wasn't that great the rest of them were all really really good i mean you saw kids like trying to do statistics as ninth graders and um you know we had kids like a kid built a tesla coil and he explained it i don't know what a tesla coil is anymore i've forgotten that i took physics a thousand years ago but Anyways, it made me feel really, really good about the future. It made us both feel really good because there are some really smart kids out there. Kids are getting so, smarter. They're, they're yeah. learning how to use the, the modern tools at their disposal. Yeah, and a lot of them did some really homegrown stuff in their garages, which just amazed me. You know, because it's really... I don't want to say it's easy to do science with infrastructure of a lab. I mean, a lot of these kids already do work in labs, you know. Um, I made a potato gun. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and stuff like that is awesome. I mean, I mean, that's, that's like, that would not have been science fair material, not for that kind of, not caliber of science fair. Well, it depends on how sophisticated the, t the potato gun mm -hmm. was and like, were you a fourth grader doing it? Because like, it's science no. engineering fair. <laughs> um, so, uh. Yeah, and Bex, yes, it was awesome. You know, there are a lot of really amazing women scientists. I think in Jake's group, also the two, I think the top two were also women. They're, well, not women, girls. I mean, they're under 18, so they're mm -hmm. girls. Um, but yeah, it was it was pretty great. Um, we, will, we will definitely do it again because we had a good time. Um, you know, you have, there's science fair in every state. You need to have a science engineering or mathematics degree to be a judge so at least a bachelor's degree and i would encourage anyone to do it because it's it's really amazing it's really amazing so yeah so we did that and then sunday we went to the ballet so i did nothing 
like around the house this weekend. We were so busy. <laughs> yeah. So that we were so busy. Hydroponic wall still in on hiatus. Yeah. I mean, maybe next weekend. It needs a couple tweaks. It needs the flow turned up a little bit now. So gotcha. I just got to do that. It just wasn't, nothing happened this weekend. I got water changed and that was all I could do. And yes, Bunny, there were two women who, who uh, elucidated the CRISPR pathway. Yeah, it was. I thought uh, you said hallucinated for a second. I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was La Charpentier and um, oh, what's her name out in California? I saw her speak. She was amazing. So, but yes, good times, good times. Something good we did for for the youth of Indiana. Gardens has an important question. Okay. Do Jake's <laughs> 18 inches fit context do Jake's 18 inch biceps fit right. in a suit? <laughs> uh, he actually has trouble buying shirts and suit coats because he's kind of v-shaped so things get really mm. tight across here and then they bag lower but he does he wore a dress shirt and a tie he did not wear a jacket because it was a two o'clock. Thank you, Jennifer Doudna. Thank you, uh, the CRISPR lady. Mm. Um, I saw her speak. She was awesome. But yes, uh, it was a two o'clock performance, so he wasn't going to wear a coat. He did wear a tie, though. We look good. So, so that was my weekend. Big weekend. But I still changed my water. Just want to point that out. Still got my water changes done. And Not that brings me. today's topic. <laughs> yes, the consistency that I lack. Um, I try to be, but generally, uh, if like if I skip a week on water changes, I will try to do a double one the next weekend. That's good. Not super consistent, but at least you're displacing the uh, the excess yeah. nutrients at some yeah. point. I skip it just doesn't happen. I mean, if it doesn't happen Sunday night, it's just not going to happen. Mm. So, I, but I'm pretty good about it. But sometimes, I, I mean, I'm not perfect. Yeah, same here. Once limits. in a while. <clears throat> Once had, in a while. Yeah, when I had COVID, I don't think I changed water for like maybe four weeks. I, I mean, I you know. Yeah, I and crazy. with a ninety with a ninety gallon tank, that's no big deal. Like, did you even get any algae whenever you... Oh, no, uh, this 90-gallon yeah. has never had algae. Never, 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 never. This tank has had some algae, but it is very stable now. That 16-gallon, it's just not there. I think bigger bigger tanks are more stable. Mm -hmm. If I had it my way, I would have one 240-gallon tank. And that's it. I mean, you can make room for one. Oh, Geek Boy says he, he got almost all his water changes done this week for the first time since before he got sick. You were sick a long time. I hope you're feeling mm -hmm. better. That sucks. But yeah, I mean, you know, if your health is bad, like mine was over the summer, what can you do? It's not optimal. It's not perfect. But I, I do try to keep up on my water changes most of yeah. the time. I would say I get, I would say like, 90% of weeks, I do a weekly water change. That sounds about right for yeah. me, too. Yeah, same here. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I think it's good to be consistent. And I also, I fertilize every day. Eric, why rock? You Thank mad you. man. With the 40. Eric, Jeez. you mad man. Thank you, Eric. He only said plants once. Plant. Uh, you know what? It's, it's because he wasn't wasn't here last week uh, oh eric eric you so don't have to make up for your no, super chat. you don't have to do oh, eric eric has some cool tetris coming yes Steven he does has, Steven has a can we coming. can we talk about eric's tetras now that he i believe he's ordered them yes eric tell you well he told me because i asked yeah he told me too he told me he too. Told me. they're actually in the uh in the video that was released today on dan's fish they were and i saw those in the video i'm like good taste eric good mm -hmm. taste. those look really good they do 
I don't very know. Cool. Maybe Eric wants it to be a surprise, though. But I'm very like excited him. for him. How many did you get, Eric? First of all, like I'm excited for you. Yeah, well, let's see if they have any left. And I'm excited for Steven's fish that's coming tomorrow. Steven is going to be a nervous wreck. A little bit. <laughs> I don't blame you. I would be too. That's yeah. That's it. Okay. Eric said, tell, tell, tell. Uh, yeah. You, uh, Eric got black line Tetris. Coasty Tetris. Coaste, coasty, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Those look really cool because, you know, when you see them in a picture, you're like, all right, okay. But then you see them in the video and you're like, okay okay those are pretty great mm -hmm. wow. yeah and the video when they're moving around you can see when the light hits them the color yeah, those really looked are. really good so yeah i have a spotted congo puffer coming tomorrow johnny even nice. posted a picture of mine in the uh, in the discord <sighs> earlier. now do you think you will name this fish i don't know I mean, because Jenna has it? not named her ghost knife, which no, is fine. Not. You know, it's her choice. It's her fish. But uh, oh, that, the puffer was floating around as an idea. If we it was, to. yeah. I mean, he's going to be a very personable fish, I would think. So, yeah, yeah maybe it, it. I don't know if I'll like officially name it. It'll probably I'll probably start referring to it in some way and that'll end up being its name yeah yeah we'll see you have to wait and see yep you gotta see its personality to see what type of name right. it means yeah. i'm excited for you because i know how long you've wanted this puffer for and i'm glad that i told you to do it as opposed to a chihiro's light i have a chihiro's light i like a chihiro's light but mm -hmm. like if you have your heart set on a puffer like you gotta just get that puffer mm -hmm. because a light's a light Right. Lights will be in stock almost forever, but especially the scoot and fruity and ones, they not, don't come it's in not stock all the time. Change your life. Like mm -hmm. I really like my Chihiro's light. And if I were starting from scratch for this tank, I would get Chihiro's lights because they're a better value, I think. Mm -hmm. But like the puffer is a way better. <laughs> that's good Bex that's good Bex and I'm so happy Bex and you streamed on Saturday mm -hmm. I couldn't watch because well I was in the car on the way back from Indianapolis for part of it and then we had to go eat dinner we were hungry <laughs> yeah that was great um doing the Saturday water change and yeah. you know whenever whenever she's up for doing it uh, you know I got I told her I got nothing going on Saturday so it was just good to see Bex again. We missed you. We love you. So that was good. But yes, I'm very excited about your puffer. I think it's awesome. Yeah, me too. I'm excited. And who knows? Maybe you'll end up getting two more or someday, yeah. you know? Yeah, maybe fine. Um, Dan doesn't get those puffers in very often, and then they take a long time to rehabilitate. So. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I feel a lot less nervous having only bought one. Yeah, because it's of like waking up one morning and finding possibly three to four dead. And like, oh, crap. oh god, yeah. <laughs> that would be yeah. a nightmare. I, I mean, it is a lot of money. Not to say that I haven't spent a lot of money on fish, because I have a lot of rainbows, but I've but never spent that much on one fish. Yeah, exactly. I think probably the yeah. most I've spent on one fish would would be like a. $60 beta. I've spent, I think, f I spent $40 on my eels, which, uh, by the way, Dan is going to have those eels in stock soon. He has a lot of them, too. Oh, my mm -hmm. God. I'm tempted to get some more of them. I love them. They are so, so cute. And they eat flakes. They're good community members. Yeah, you showed them eating uh, Viber Bites. Yeah, and I, I can't feed Viber Bites because rainbows will choke on them, but I they'll eat any right. any prepared food. They eat flakes, no problem. Like oh, just, shit. I feed my rainbows Viber Bites like twice a week. I wouldn't do it. Ra I, I mean, I've already struggled with rainbows choking on food. They're so dumb. Like, my rainbows will try to eat a whole mouthful of them at once. Oh. 
Like I can like I can't even feed mice a shrimp because I've seen them choke on that. They're dumb. <laughs> they are so dumb. So like I would I used to feed um uh like algae wafers for my my bottom feeding crew. And they I Yeah, I haven't had them like struggle with those, but I used to have the cat like the sinking pellets that were like mm-hmm tiny little balls that were exactly the size of their mouth and they would just swim around with them sticking out of their mouth. Yeah. 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 It's just not worth the risk. I know there's some people who say they soak them first, but like there's still a chance. Rainbows are too dumb and I can't risk them. Okay. So you got your four red lizard whip tails too. Oh, I'm so excited for you. That's awesome. Just fill the box, right? I didn't, There was really nothing else that I needed, but I got some stuff that I could use. Like I got some more Siamese algae eaters to fill the box and I got seven more coolie loaches. Yeah. Because you know, you can put coolie loaches anywhere and in any number. Nice. And I and Alishan says that Dan sent a hundred dollar gift voucher for his club's auction. That's exciting. Way to go, Dan. Cool. It's cool. I hope someone, I hope you get that one. That would be a good prize. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I mean, people, I think once people try Dan, they're like, oh, well, this is where it's hard to go back. I'm at like 264 out of 264 fish have arrived alive. I'm lucky though, because my fish, like he ships them. I get the shipping notice at about 5 p.m. the night before, and they get here by like 9.30 a.m. So I'm just really lucky because I'm early on the postal route. So, you know, it, it helps. Plus, I order really hearty fish. So that's yeah. why I'm, I'm doing really well. I mean, it's still perfect uh, live arrival with Dan, and I'm last on the ups route and yeah. it's like i don't know 15 there right now and it's 84 here they yeah. really have to solve a, a, a puzzle to right really get and that's, fish that's to me. The, yeah and that's the other thing there's not a huge te- temperature differential between him and me i mean it's still dipping below freezing at night here it's warmer it's out there is still really cold it's not that as cold here but you know, you still need heat packs here. You, you really do. So I saw, has anyone ever given a fish a water bath like LRB does with Guppy? So he does that with all his fish, as far as I know, under the sink with the net. Well, he thinks that he also quarantines, but he thinks that it washes away parasites, pestilence. Mm-hmm. I um, wouldn't think that would help anything. If anything, it's only like battering up the slime coast on the fish because of the water. Yeah, I mean, I mean, maybe if there were some loose parasites in the water, but I think it just stresses out the fish. I mean, it's, I've, it's pretty hard. Nobody's going to do side by side tests on that, right? Think, yeah. You know, maybe some really go getter ninth grader will do it for the science fair. <laughs> but uh and then you'll harshly judge them <laughs> i only like, harshly I judge the one kid <laughs> i have all those other kids were just so smart i was just there to be like i'm so proud of you so um i think it just i mean i don't you know I, what i do though is i i'll give my plants a little tap water rinse because yeah. Not not because I think that I'm getting rid of pathogens or anything so much, but like if there's a little bit of decay or sliminess, which happens. The water pressure will get rid of it. Yeah, that kind of just rinses it away. So I do just a quick tap water rinse. I don't worry about dechlorinated water, which you would have to for fish. Mm -hmm. Um, So Moose says he did a water bath once and a guppy with fungus on its fin. Yeah, I mean, it worked. I like, did it. Yeah. yeah. What What did you think? Um, I don't do that. I would advocate quarantining, being careful where you get your fish from. I'm just um, thinking if you don't, if you, you can wash off visible fungus, but if there's a single spore of it left on uh, the cup, it's, yeah. 
Right. And if it's an internal infection, mm -hmm. it's not going to make a difference. So I don't know, but you know, we all have our, we all have our little things that we do and maybe they matter and maybe they don't. Um, you know, even when I was back, when I was a researcher, we all had our little voodoo that mm -hmm. we did in our experiments that was important to the process. It may have been different than someone else's voodoo because, you know, research is someone in art also and fish keeping is also an art. Mm -hmm. So Bob says that he did baths on saltwater fish when I didn't want to medicate corals as well. I didn't have quarantine tank. Yeah, saltwater quarantine tank is probably a more pain in the butt to set up. But a freshwater quarantine tank is really easy. You can use a Rubbermaid bin. You can um, you just uh, keep an old sponge filter that you swipe on the substrate to get it seeded. Mm -hmm. um and and plop a heater in it and there you go uh, if it's warm in the summer you don't even need a heater you need a heater right now in my house my house is cold <laughs> hello precious smile <laughs> so you know it it is pretty easy and i'll tell you that you can't trust every source of fish mm -hmm. even ones you think are trustworthy so i got a couple of fish from someone I really thought I could trust. I will not say who. It was an individual. Peplin, person. no, I'm kidding. Their, their, <laughs> their fish are like flawless. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. But those nasty little fish gave all of my beautiful rainbows ick, which was very stressful. I was able to cure it. I did not lose a single fish. But still, I don't need that kind of stress in my life and my mm -hmm. fish don't need it. So right. I am very careful where I get my fish from. Very careful. Geek Boy says trust no one. And you know what? That's a good policy. You should probably trust no one. Trust no one. Question everything. Every fish. You should quarantine every fish. That's the party line I tell people. If I don't do it, it's on me. Yep. Better safe than sorry. You never know what they're carrying. Yeah. So uh, Peplin mentioned he's getting a mop of Radinocentris not a Series Creek. That's awesome. I knew you were getting the Peplin, the Melanotinia trifasciata um, Papin Creek, but you're, he's giving you Series Creek too. I'm so happy about that. So I hooked Brian up with one of my rainbow fish breeding friends and uh, Joshua and Joshua is sending him mops, which I think is awesome because Brian can hatch those out. And those are lines we're trying to preserve, especially mm -hmm. that Pappin Creek, because they aren't really available in the U.S. And that's a really beautiful rainbow. And pa Peplin Creek should be breeding Pappin Creek. I mean, it just makes sense. So Foxhand says, the only thing that I will ever catch from PCA, Peplin Creek Aquatics, is <laughs> Is multiple tank syndrome. <laughs> you know what? My brain now immediately reads that. Read that multiple tank 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 yeah, I mean, that's always a danger, too, which is why I, I do wash my plants. <laughs> it maybe helps. But, you know, I don't, they haven't really taken a hold ever in my tank. I don't like it. I don't know. I've, uh, I found one use for Malaysian trumpet snails, and you don't need that many. But uh, they're doing a good job of cleaning up the excess food in the yeah. little breeders uh, where the oh, nice. berries are. I saw Moose was asking about the uh, orange Venezuelans. Um, we have, I don't know, 50 fry right now and another 200 eggs. <clears throat> it looks like a good bit of the eggs that we have now aren't fertile um, that I mm. can tell, but there's still a good like a hundred that are. So, wow. That's yeah, awesome. if that's going to be a weekly thing. That's why you uh, get that baby brine production going. Yeah, daily now. And I'm um, for the co-op brine shrimp eggs in the one uh, blender. And That's I can awesome. feed most of my tanks with that. Eric Wyrock recommended me a little tiny hatching dish, which mm. I used. And I hatched some brine shrimp for some of my tanks. I didn't get a super great hatch rate. It's very cold in my house. I think I would have to... My house is probably only like 62 degrees. <laughs> Do you have one of those USB heaters? Did we send you one of those? 
you did because that's what i use it. and it, yeah. it like i use that in the artemia blender and it and it keeps the water at like 83 and I try that. Use a controller it's really it's really like perfectly dialed in just for that and i can yeah very very easily do two scoops in the in the blender i should try that because um it's just really cold in my house yeah it's just really cold but yeah, in the yeah. summer my house will be like 80 degrees so and i'll feel much better 80 oh no i mean i don't mind i i mean i do all that hot yoga at 92 and it just you get used to heat you think Negative. you can't do it, but if you did hot yoga for like eight years, you'd be fine. Hot yoga sounded bad at the beginning. Exactly. And then it was like, all you had to do is like hot that yoga sounds worse. For several years, and then no, uh, I mean, not even that long. I mean, you you just quickly be able to deal with heat. It just doesn't bother you. I I like it now. I mean, there are there's a point where I don't want to be hot, right? Everybody, if like, especially if it's super humid, but I'm okay with it. Jeez, I'm trying to search for this USB heater for Zinger, and I typed in hot yoga in the uh, in the prime. <laughs> Steven, the I would be so part. proud of you if you started going to hot yoga. That would be, would be so proud. Of you. Would you be proud of me if I just did regular yoga? Yes, I would be. I would be so proud of you if you did any yoga. I would be proud of you if you if you did Yin yoga, which is mostly like just taking a nap in different poses. I would, Ooh, I would be proud of you if you did guided meditation, which is where like the last 30 minutes you just lie on the ground and rest. Like, I would be proud of you for all of it. Oh, look at Bex, already dropping the link. Thank you. I was, I was she is like, a pro level nod. I mean, she is worth every bit we pay her. Yeah. Wait, no, she's Wait. worth way more than that. We don't pay her at all. <laughs> every non penny. That's right. <laughs> so yeah, there's the the link goes to a 10 watt, 20 watt, and 30 watt. The 10 watt is the one that's USB powered, and wow. it's I mean it's not good for heating up an actual tank of any like acceptable size. Like it, yeah, it literally says 0 0.5 to one gallon tank. Right, but, but for the brine yeah, shrimp, shrimp, perfect. I mean that's only like what two liters maybe. Mm -hmm. No, it's pretty small. So. Man, didn't we have like some kind of topic? We talked about water changes. What else we did. is consistent in a planet? Consistency. Myrtle, what do, you, what do you like to be consistent on? Fertilization, the yes. food I'm taking, giving, the amount of water I remove and add, the the time it, in between the filter cleanings. Uh, oh, I'm not good at any of those things. <laughs> I, I those are the things I like day. to do. I never said I do them. Mm. Yeah, I fertilize every day now um, because I just found that like if I doubled the recommended dose, my plants and then split it evenly it, between the seven days. Yeah, it works. They better. just I no, I even doubled the dose of what the highlight is supposed to get. Like yeah, and oh, I have now to do it every day. <laughs> you might she's just mod. bragging. Single left-handed mod. <laughs> Because she's eating chips with the right hand. Well, at least she's eating an acceptable flavor of chips. Oh, God, yeah. yeah. I am not a fan of uh, salt and vinegar chips. They Bruno were Kelly the, from the stream snack stream. food of my ex-husband, though. They always oh. make me think of him. Oh. Yeah. I don't really want to think of him. <laughs> yeah, so 3G likes yogurt. Does that count? Not for yoga. No, but I do eat a lot of yogurt, <laughs> so, I mean, you could. Rob says that I should lead yoga at the clash. I would totally lead yoga at the clash. I would love to to lead yoga at the clash. If I walk in one of your talks and it's like a surprise yoga class, I'm walking surprise out. yoga okay. all in our Rico yoga pants. <laughs> okay, so speaking so, of fertilizing, yes, Annette has an important question: Do I need to start fertilizing? What do I need to get? I know Annette is planting a tank. Yep. Yes, you do. So we just um, sent her a box, uh, a box out today of um, a lot of pretty easy plants like yeah. Ludwigia, a bunch of high grows, uh, bulbitis, some vowels, mm -hmm. um, mostly everything other than the bulbitis, everything just goes straight into her uh, stratum. Yeah. So 
how much water column fertilization should she be doing in the beginning? I would say little to none. Um, I know I would still start. I would do the recommended dose. I, I would do the recommended dose. For a week? And like, I would use, yeah, yeah like the nine. recommended dose in the bottle. So like if it says one pump per every 10 gallons once a week, then she would do that once a week. So she, it's her, she, her tank's what, 75, 90? Uh, yeah, it's 90. 90. And it just so it has nine one goldfish and three plecos in it. So it's yeah. going to be a mosh pit event, a live air mosh pit eventually. Yeah, mm -hmm. her water is really, really low cage out of the tap. So even without injecting CO2, she's going to get pretty rapid growth. Mm -hmm. um, I don't That's know what true. kind of light you have. It's a, uh, it's an, it's a basic light, like an Aquion. Okay. Oh, yeah, the one that she's a should. pretty low okay. light. Yeah, like I didn't send her anything that was super demanding, like for light. Maybe the Rotala and Lubig might be the most. Yeah. Pretty but low. They'll still grow. They'll just have different colors. I would things. start. I would start with an all-in-one fertilizer, like either Easy Green or Nylac G. Those are both really easy to use. Yeah. And I would just do the low light recommended dose once mm -hmm. a week. See how that goes. But yes, I do think that you should fertilize because. It just gives your plants what they need from the start. And I now fertilize. You... So this one is getting 10 pumps every single day of easy green for a nine or for a 90 gallon. This one is getting oh, so, yeah, that's, five that's... pumps every day of easy green for a 40 gallon every day. Holy Not crap. It. But they eat it right up. And this one, I mean, I've got all those immersed plants right all those house plants growing out the top and they just so the house plants are eating it up to here yeah this tank behind me gets maybe a full dose of easy green once every two weeks if i remember wow see here's the thing even though i have a decent stock rate if i don't dose that much my java ferns look like crap and java ferns are they my well weather them. plants like if Gotcha. If Java ferns look like crap, I know I need to dose more, 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 more. And my plants will just suck it all up. I have fairly high light. I have CO2. I mean, they just need it. Yep. So, and I, so Tom Barr, whose, whose work I do respect, he is a plant physiologist. He is not just some dude, right? He has said that you can dose all of your macros so your nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium on the first day after your water change. And yeah. then you can just dose your micros gradually after that. You have to grow, dose your micros gradually because they do break down. Mm -hmm. But I can't remember to do that. So I just, and I like to use these all-in-ones because they're easier for me. And so I just dose mm -hmm. every single day. Yeah, that's what I do too. 15 pumps goes into this tank every week and then... It's three on a water change day and then two every uh, every day after that. Something yeah. weird is happening in my living room 40. Oh. Like, I remember I had overdosed mm -hmm. micros before. I did like a tiny a bit of CSM, uh, the CSM plus B, the Plantech mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's doing the same shit on me again. It's getting a little fine algae and mm -hmm. like the like some of the leaves turning brown. I don't know what it is about that tank that just maybe I just need to like stop doing micros or just like try to do easier because usually people big. quit doing macros. I yeah, I barely micros, do macros anyway I mean, because rainbow. You know, every tank is different. I just know that for these, like oh, man, they just need it. They need a lot of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, and, and these Java ferns are looking fantastic now. Even the Trident Java fern, which is a little fussier, it was not looking very good because I was being lazy about fertilization. And then I'm like, no, I'm going to start rarely fertilizing. And they got a little better. And then I realized, oh, no, they need a lot more fertilization. So uh, Oinky sent a member milestone chat saying, uh, for all, do you have a favorite substrate? And if so, why? Who will stratum? It's a good stratum or or contra soil, like one of the aqua soils. Yeah, and that's it. Maybe yeah, I like Fluvox like stratum or UNS contra soil. I like UNS contra soil because it has um, 
a little smaller yeah, green canyon. Yeah. Texture, I think, is a little easier to plant in for finer tanks. But I also like stratum. I think it works equally well. Um, I do not like eco complete. Mm -hmm. I think it's a waste of money. I personally don't like uh, fluorite. I just don't like the way it looks. I don't think it works as well as aqua soil. Unless um, you're me and geek beg to differ because this tank behind me, nothing but fluorite. That amazing peninsula tank in in the tour of Geek's house. No, yeah, but, uh, it's just fluorite. I still, I just don't like it. I think it's like dusty and it's lighter. I just don't like working. Oh yeah, it's nasty. Well, it's nasty. I, don't, yeah, sure. I also can... don't like. I like black substrates. Don't like how mm. it looks. But I don't think it is a bad substrate. Whereas Eco Complete, I think, is a waste of money and it's gross. Yeah. It shreds so. plants more than it helps them. So Bunny asks, what causes holes in plants and leaves and what can I do about it? It isn't the fish or snails as far as I can tell. Well, do you mm. have a pleco? Plecos will, like, especially a bushy nose pleco, they will rasp on your plants. Um, so that is an issue, but usually it's nutrient. It can be nutrient deficiency. Mm -hmm. You might need to fertilize a little more. I mean, are you fertilizing? That can really, that's really going to help. It what do they typically the say that the, if it's like pinholes, it's like potassium or magnesium whatever or something? If, I don't know. I mean, the those, those is are, potassium, I think, and then the bigger holes is like the bigger holes that are not a perfect circle. Those are the uh, yeah. overall nitrogen, and like generally, you don't have enough nutrients. I think it's usually. I would just recommend fertilizing more mm -hmm. in general, especially not if you're using an all-in-one, all -in because those are generally fine-tuned to have enough of everything. So yeah, I mean, people get all worried, like, oh, it's a potassium deficiency. It's this deficiency. It's kind of usually an everything deficiency. I mean, that's just why people are like, the Java the ferns are potassium hogs. I'm like, mm, Java ferns are everything hogs if you have <laughs> CO2. Like, they just suck down a lot of nutrients. I only have one Java fern, and it's small in this 90, so maybe that has something to do with it. So Moose asks me, Kelly, on Java ferns, isn't there some sort of disease that spreads from yellow leaves? I haven't noticed that. I mean, if I have yellow leaves on a Java fern, it's because I am not fertilizing enough, period, end of story. That leaves just dying. That's all it is. When I started increasing my fertilization, my Java ferns all of a sudden look better. Mm -hmm. And now these Java ferns, I'll take you in for a look. Field trip to Kelly's tank. I mean, look at that job for this trident right there. Isn't that great? Nice and that is because bushy. I have been pushing the ferts like crazy in this tank. Dang. It needs it. Looking good. I've got to thin those clumps out because they're out of control. So, yeah, Geek said it's fluorite, black sand, and then the bulk of the tank is, is eco complete in the 90. The reason why I thought it was. Um, it was fluorite because he uses the red eco complete in there. I forgot that existed. There's red eco complete. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Huh. I don't think I that was, was around. I was going through years. the video just now because I'm like, you know what, geek? I'm going to prove you wrong about your own tank that you've had for several years. <laughs> and I, I don't. I don't remember eco complete coming in red, but I, I've only used eco complete. I use it at the aquascaping competition and it's nasty. It's like covered in that gross juice. Yeah. It's got juice on it. It's gross. Yeah. So I anyway. use, if I if I ever have to use EcoComplete, like I, I make sure to poke holes in the bag and just like drain it over a sink before so I gross. add it to a thing. So gross. But I, I vowed to never use it again. So I don't even yeah. care what, what products they come out with anymore. Yeah. I just really like aqua soils. I think they're worth the money. If I didn't have the money, which frequently in my lifetime I have not, um, I I will use just black diamond blasting sand. Which yeah, even though it's not marketed as an aqua soil, I think it is it's multiple better than eco complete. Yeah, because it's, it's not shredding it the plants. Yeah, Sorry. Sorry. yeah, it's cheap. It works. So I've seen some great tanks done with it. It's mm -hmm. it's a little bit less forgiving than an aqua soil, though. I think an aqua soil is more forgiving. So 
to answer then says, the then, soprano you got from mike sent out multiple runners with like 15 plantlets there's one you got from him there's one and wait uh, why why can't i do this right okay there we go oh so <laughs> there's, a third one. there's a third one coming out so there's like i don't know a dozen plantlets some <laughs> stores some swords just are crazy in sending out the plantlets. I have a red twist sword right here. Mm -hmm. Show you. Yeah, the fancy twist and the Sukarno look almost identical. Yeah, red twist is out of control. I mean, look at all those plantlets. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm going to send those. See, it needs to warm up in Wyoming because I'm going to send those to Dan of Dan's Fish so he can aquascape that damn tank behind him. Johnny already did. What are you talking well, about? No, he aquascaped it. Yes, Johnny did. But now he, he needs to and add actually, some more. I think the hardscape looks really good, but it needs more plants. Yeah, like a lot more plants. plants. So I'm going to send them a box. A but like, it's cold there. <laughs> it's cold there. So. Yeah, Bex is not a fan of Ecocomplete. Yeah, I have I it in there. one tank. Now I have like aqua soil and sand on top of it. Yeah. So it does. No, I would have removed the Ecocomplete completely. I would. I don't care how dirty the yeah. tank is. I would have just bucketed, uh, scooped all that Ecocomplete out. The advantage, I, the advantage with aqua soils are that they lower your KH. And I love that. Yeah. It will lower your KH a couple points. Mm hmm which makes growing things so much easier so much easier and if your cage is already super low it's not gonna like lower it to zero i mean no you know. i mean is like again consistency is you can crazy. have zero cage <laughs> if you are doing water changes and you don't have to worry about your tank crashing right but i i love this stuff i think it just makes growing plants easier so much easier and that's one more good thing about aqua soils um where i live the cage swings from i don't know two to six depending on the time well no two to seven seven eight i think why depending on a, the, yeah so if so i helps it keep it a little bit more consistent throughout the year let's put it this way if it came down to spending money on aqua soil or spending money on an expensive light aqua soil. i would spend it on aqua soil because a light's a light. I mean, yeah, I like apps. Yeah, I like better colors. Yeah, you know, I like my bells and whistles. But a light's a light. And light is cheap these days. Mm -hmm. You know, you yeah. can get yourself a decent light for not much money. Yeah. And if you're fine, I mean, some people aren't a fan of the way some of these... Uh, Amazon companies do business. They're essentially selling everyone selling the same light with different housing. Yeah. Um, but they are very affordable and yeah. they're going and to they do work. really well for your uh for a you know any planted tank really, as long as you're not exactly. trying to blast it with high light. Exactly. I mean you're gonna need a couple of fixtures, but you're mm -hmm. gonna need a couple of fixtures for a lot of tanks. Exactly. I bring you flu vol 3.0s over this 90. And honestly, I could probably throw a fourth on there. Because if you have room up there, I don't think an idea is enough to provide. Yeah, at a certain point, I can't fit anymore. Um, on a 40 breeder, I, I have two fixtures on there just because I need the spread front to back. So if you're thinking about where to invest your money, I think I would use I would do aqua soil before fa fancy lights. I would do mm -hmm. CO2 before I would do. Right. Aqua fancy. soil, decent regulator. Yeah. CO2 set up and then yeah. whatever you got left to put some light on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, we all are budget constrained in some way, right? And if you're not budget constrained, you're time or space constrained. Like yeah. unless you have a staff to work on your aquariums. Especially when you've got multiple tank syndrome and you've got 20 tanks and then you can't put Chihiros and Fluval 3.0s no. on all of them. Well, uh, you know, at a certain point, yeah, I mean, you can't have that much light and CO2 on tanks because you can't take care of 20 yeah, tanks. The, more, the higher the light and the more CO2 you have, you're going to trim right. it more. All that Plant stuff. farm's getting a little bit out of control, especially during the winter when I couldn't ship anything, but now I can finally start harvesting. Yeah. So Leo asks, would aqua soil have a good effect on hard water? Absolutely. Yes, it will lower your pH. It will make things 
better. Now, if you are like, you know, if you have water like I did in Iowa of KH22, I mean, maybe it'll knock it down to like KH16. It really doesn't matter. That's still so hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's going to help. Yeah, it's going mean, to help. And, and we're talking about hard water in the context of how of the hardness that affects plants, which is carbonate versus right. your actual right. uh, mineral. Your hardness, magnesium which is or your calcium. Calcium. Yeah. calcium. Yeah. So that's why that it really doesn't matter how high it is because mine range, mine goes from eight to twenty one, eight to twenty one or something. The highest, oh. higher end of the API test scale, but oh that doesn't God. make that doesn't have an effect on the uh, plant. No, and since mine has zero out of the tap, and I am not going to spend the time to like measure the actual weight of the powder that I'm putting <laughs> you in. Just dump right. it. The fluctuation <laughs> is all over the place. Yeah, I mean my water. You know, because in the mat, the Midwest, our KH and GH are always from calcium carbonate, magnesium carbonate. So our GH and KH are often equal. So, yeah, my mine are six. And mine is pretty steady, too. It doesn't change throughout the year. So I'm lucky. Yeah, I'm unlucky when that. If I, when I use the APA test kits, I run out of the GH test kit way before <laughs> I run out of the KH. So I, and they only sell it together. So I end up with... More oh, of the cage bottles yeah, in the gym. Yeah, yeah. But I guess you could use the strips, which I do like the strips for quick checks. I think those are nice. I put the strip in the guppy tank and it in the GH part of it turns a color that's not even on the freaking chart. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know, five hundred. Oh god. Lady Diane, good to see you in chat. Hey, Lady Hello, Diane. Lady Diane. It's so good to have you here. So Rob says my KH and GH are off the chart with the test strips. Where do you live, Rob? What region of the country? You must live somewhere with awfully hard water, which I've been there. I'm, I'm from Iowa. Oh, yeah, there you go. And done. That water is hard. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. I was just curious. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it does make growing plants much more of a challenge, especially without CO2. It's really hard without CO2. Whereas Annette, I mean, her water's super soft. She just needs to get into plant because she has prime water. She'll have that she might pressure. need a little more light. The yeah. light that comes with the tank, I don't think it's it's that. a well, it's not a stock light. Okay. No, it's, it's so she's light. had that tank for a while. She got a new light. I'm pretty sure she just got it for her birthday. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is it's she, one of those lights that if you go to a Petco or a PetSmart, it's their plant. Uh, Mar it's like okay. the plant light that they carry. Okay. So it's it's good enough to grow. Girl. Right. I okay. mean, it's not okay. like the, the, an amazing thing, but I'm, uh, I sent her hygrophila. And, oh, yeah, it'll be prepared. fine. Yeah. And that water is so soft. Yeah, mm -hmm. it'll be fine. Yeah. Hygrophila polysperma sunset will grow in a Home Depot bucket on the floor with no light, I am sure. That's yeah. like my baseline. It'll grow on a toilet. But I sent her, yeah, I mean, I sent her that kind of stuff along with like some slow growers like Crips um, and the bulbitis and stuff because something of what I've sent her is going to take off and oh, sure. help the tank balance regardless. Yeah. And just figure out what, what her water likes. and uh, Yeah. Well, and your water is really, it's easy water. So Annette says she is the Aquion Opta Bright LED light for a 48 to 58 inch tank. So it's probably a 48 inch light. Yeah, I mean, that's probably good. Yeah. You're not growing anything super highlight. That's probably good. Yeah. Your oh, water yeah. is oh. really, you have the easiest water. I mean, it plants just grow in it. Yeah. It's. Is, does she have like the same kind of water as like the Seattle people? Yeah, I think the yeah. Portland water is super soft. She's not in Portland though. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I'm just curious, like if it if it's different. Um, so Oinky asking, does anyone cap the fluval stratum? Kelly doesn't. I am anti-capping, and here's why: it will eventually mix, and I don't think that plants do as well when they're capped i think you get better growth without yeah same here yeah the, the i know Stephen like, yeah. does that. i mean uh, nine, cap and no cap which no cap is like a thing that kids say now i know what does that oh. even mean i don't no, know I, I don't know i don't know i i never use the term i don't know what that means I'm, i think it means I'm like old. i'm serious or like i'm not lying or something i don't but where did uh, cap probably. what is that even yeah 
I don't know. I mean, they probably looked at a cap and they're like, oh, if you, you can use a bot, I don't know. <laughs> so Annette says her water is 7.8 out of tap. Is that your pH, I'm assuming? Yeah, because so you, you don't measure K or G or H. Your pH are different beasts. We need to know your cage, but I think it's pretty soft. Well, I mean, 7.8 pH. I'm wondering. Oh, God. Stefan be bussing. <laughs> no I thought a bust was a kiss. Does it have a new name now? I'm really old. When I was at that science fair, I was older than a lot of their parents. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. That hurt. Okay, what Bex just said, I agree with. Yeah. <laughs> we just need like... to stay in our lanes. <laughs> I know. Don't even. I'm not, on I'm not on TikTok, but Annette is on it for me. She I'm on TikTok, and I like anytime I see those words, it's because some some millennial is trying to use them ironically. Like you know, those words cool. come and go. Like nobody says on fleek anymore. And that was a thing like 10 years ago. That didn't last very long, I don't think. It didn't last. So I'm like, well, let's just wait to see if these new terms have staying power. You know what what term I hate? Low key used all the time. Like I low key something something. Mm. And then the worst is high key. What the fuck does that even mean? Like I high key, blah blah blah. Fuck you, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> All right, I'm done. Nice. Jake said low key about something the other day. I'm like, no, no, no. Are the people who say that something is everything when they really like it? It's everything. <sighs> like okay, but other things are better. Uh, so are you sure uh, that's everything? And that says, I will forever be so fetched. Thank you. Garden's still Thank trying you. to make fetch happen. She's trying. <laughs> She's trying. <laughs> I'm trying to make fetch. <laughs> oh, so anything else with consistency? I mean, uh, I uh, am not a good poster child for keeping on top of trimming. because Leo my would, would like us to answer his question twice. Um, I mean, I answered it once, so you're just going to have to rewind. <laughs> but a uh, high cage Overall, water, yes, it, it would will lower your pH. pH. So was my answer not good enough, Stephen? This is what I want to know, because I answered the question. Do you need Bernal to answer it also? He, you know, he tagged me. Okay, he said no, I didn't. Did. <laughs> <sighs> yes, Aquas oil will, will help with high KH water. They will not help with high GH water, but that really doesn't matter. Yeah, it don't matter. Your, your water can be as high in GH as you want. You know what will happen with super high GH water is your, you will get like a crusty Calcium deposit, yeah. And your, your lid annoying. will get super crusty. And I don't use lids, so annoying. I get that crust on my lights, and then I have to like mm -hmm. a vinegar solution and just like yeah. just scrape it with is a that like that never happens with my water. You ever heard of salt creep and like getting like right. like a, a like a connection to the light shocking the shit out of you? I don't want that to ever happen. Right. That that is a problem for uh, salt, salt water, water yeah. keepers. <sighs> Um, I used to get crusty lids and crusty lights all the time when I lived in Iowa. I Doesn't threw away a lid once that was com oh, it God. went from transparent to complete opaque and vinegar didn't help it because it got so much calcium on it. You're just it like, just I'm looks done. like a piece of white glass. I couldn't use it anymore. You're just I'm done. I mean, yeah. I used to scrape them with a razor blade. Oh, no, scraping it. didn't help this light because it got it went into the glass, I think. Oh, vinegar it's didn't help point. it. Scraping it felt smooth. I brought some hydrochloric acid home from work once to clean a lid. I don't advise okay, that. But you though. work in a lab. You had. You know what? Sense. Don't. You know what people. I would have used nuclear acids on that. I hate that every time I use you it. You know what people don't don't do that. Don't clean yeah. your lid with hydrochloric acid. Don't just don't. Why yeah, do that's I vinegar? Not, that's not vinegar is the way. way. Like in, I use a combination of Dawn and vinegar mixed together. You just have to make sure you rinse it off really well. Mm -hmm. But Dawn is not like super dangerous in terms of residue being left on because it's it's a detergent right it rinses pretty well but it has a lot of fragrances in it 
It's not really always. loaded with fragrances. So I, it smells. I mean, smell Dawn dish soap. It's so... Yeah, but they do make... Is it Dawn that makes it? You that... can use unscented Dawn. I just... Yeah. The thing is, is Dawn dish soap is not going to clean those hard water deposits away. Uh, it will cut through It'll all the other crap. The algae and all that. It It'll clean that. Those. I just scrub those with a brush. But yeah, so CoreWorks says you can buy muriatic acid at the hardware store. But you know what? The official policy of what your plants is to not advise that people play around with muriatic acid. Don't do it. Don't do it because you don't know what you're doing. Uh, the random listener to this stream, we cannot be liable for your foolishness. Mm -hmm. I can do it because I worked in labs for, I don't know, 20 years or something. I can do it because I'm reckless. But again, but I don't endorse him doing that. I know what I'm I've doing. Done I, I, I have not made any errors with it at all. I've been super precise um, yes. every time I use it. So Renee mentions, and this is a good point. You can use this. You can use citric acid used in, yeah. um, to clean them. Yes, and you can buy that um, on Amazon. It's pretty cheap, and that works pretty well, and that's safe. And I think it smells better than vinegar. Definitely. So Leo is asking, do I soak the lid? See, the other thing about the Dawn is the dry. viscosity mixed with the vinegar. You can kind of it kind of stays on and uh, on the lid, and just let it sit for like I don't know five ten minutes. It works. It works for me. That's how I do it. I Mr. Clean pads are good too. On. Yeah, those are good. Those are good. Yeah, but that doesn't happen when your K your GH is only six. My light, my uh, lids don't get crusty. Mm -hmm. So, I took the lid off the mosh pit because I was so tired of it getting so nasty. I can't take lids off. Rainbow. have rainbows. Yeah, yeah, rainbows still have lids. Anything that can can go without a lid, I'm starting to go without a lid. And I have cats. And I just don't like having tanks without lids because I don't like to top them off. Mm -hmm. I don't like to mess with it. The only reason I don't have a lid is because my lights cover up the whole tank, so there is no need it's for lid. a lid. <laughs> yeah, the oh, light itself that, is yeah. yeah. Yeah, right. that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. But with rainbows, you can't be too careful. I had a rainbow jump out once when I took the lids outside to hose them off. Oh, wow. oh they know, they oh, know. It's come like, on, I was able to get it back in the tank and it was okay. They know you're not around to watch it jump out. And then they... I'm like, dudes, a cat is gonna eat you. So CoreWork says, I use citric acid to clean stainless steel and also you can use it as a dechlorinator. Do your own research on ratios. Citric acid should be more commonly kept item. I do not recommend using it as a dechlorinator. Oh, don't don't, don't do that. that. It's not an effective dechlorinator. Um, maybe your water is already naturally low in chlorine, and you're lucky. And you know, I guess good for you for being lucky. But you know, what your plants also does not endorse that. So, mm -hmm. but and, I, and it's not for chloramine. And I have chloramine. I just use yeah. Prime. Simple. Yeah. yeah my it, water. It, just it's not been. too expensive to use a regular dechlorinator. You don't have to go thing. about You're the saving other. no money. You're saving nothing. I mean, if you want to save money, get a product like Seachem Safe. Yeah, or, or fr well, well, if you have smaller product. tanks, it would probably be better with Fritz ACCR instead of Seachem Safe. Because Seachem Safe, you can use a pinpoint in like a thousand gallon tank and it's still too much. Right. I mean, honestly, for three tanks, it takes me a whole year to go through a bottle of Prime. That's why I don't buy Seachem Safe, and I do water changes every week. Food safe to chlorinase. I, I didn't even like think about that being a, a, a necessity, but I guess yeah, of mm -hmm. uh, citric acid if you need food safe to chlorinate. Yeah, but don't trust it for your aquarium. Don't just use a real dechlorinator mm -hmm. according to the package directions. Yeah, or you know. I, I I say we're not going to tell you to do anything that is that requires you to be precise and do your own research. So, so we're not responsible for that. But I also encourage people to do their own research and find different ways to do things. Because there are many, 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 many ways to do the same thing. And there are, but a lot of people do, do also really bad research because they 
don't See, don't do bad research. Don't do bad research. Your plants research. officially says do good research. Do good research. Mm -hmm. Find good sources. Like if Tom Barr gives you advice on something, okay, he's an yeah. expert. He's, he's a person who knows things. If George Farmer says to do something, okay, George really knows his plants. Like, But if like someone who you've never seen their planted tanks gives you planted tank advice. Random Reddit post. Yeah, I mean. Copied and pasted from 4chan. Yeah, I mean, there's a reason the three of us are in front of our tanks or, or videos of our tanks because we want, you to know, we want you to know we, we can grow plants. So do good research. I believe Austin is about to go live. So right. everybody head over to Fantastic Freaks. And um, thank you to our mods and lurkers and members and super chatters and replay crew. And do you add, and then one last question here, do you add the chlorinator when I test tap? for kh and gh no I, no i don't i mean unless i'm testing the whole tank like because i i just want to see how it's going but i usually test it straight from the top yeah uh, and one last word of advice for research that coro says yeah. yes confirmation bias is a danger That's don't right. do it keep an open mind when you do your research don't yep. yeah if you want if you want to buy an arrow one up or ten gallon like you said don't look for that one article on the internet that says, yeah, I mean, you if, you, if you ask enough people, someone will tell you it's okay. Mm -hmm. If you ask the same person enough times and they feel like you're not going to go away until you get that answer, they might tell you what you want to hear. They might. Mm -hmm. So if you've had 10 people already tell you no, maybe, maybe you should not do it. All right, Joe. Um, See y'all Wednesday night, and I will be with a brand new puffer, hopefully. Yes, Yay! Bye, right, everyone. Bye. Bye.